Uh, some ask, uh, how are we to take the prophecies of the uh, Bible? And is it normative to think they could be used in our own particular day? And there's a division in the house, unfortunately, uh, which is uh, called replacement theology, in which the promises made to Israel from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and David, and the New Covenant particularly, are said to be given over to the church because Israel failed. But yet you have statement after statement in which God says, uh, look, some of the Jewish people may not participate in that final day because of unbelief, but I will not give up the promises. After all, wasn't it true in Genesis 15, it was God himself who walked between the pieces. They cut the covenant. The word to make a covenant is to cut a covenant. And they cut the pieces, one half the animal on one side, one half the other, forming an aisle down the middle. So there were three cut animals and then two birds. And God walked between the pieces and said, in effect, may I, God, die like these animals if I don't keep what I promised here. Meanwhile, Abraham was not a partner in this in the sense that he obligated himself. He's snoozing over in the side on a tarde ma in a very deep sleep. So he's out of it. But it is God who makes that uh, uh, promise. So when the church then brought in replacement theology uh, and uh, had a supersessionist kind of thing in which they sat now in the chair that belonged to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and his descendants. They uh, took away what God had promised, I will do on the pledge of my life, on the pledge of my life. So uh, I think God is going to fulfill that. And look, it's too late to argue about that because there are already six million Jewish people back in the land. So if you're going to argue, you've got to raise six million people that are back in the land, which you can't do. So it's about time to uh, shape up the theology in connection with uh, uh, the reality shows. <laughs>